Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm your host, Sei Xiu, and today I'm speaking with Lauren Rutten, who is a explorer, a photographer, a teacher, a mentor to many, and she's also going to be presenting at Inspire Photo Retreats in February. And this is in addition to all the other Inspire interviews. This is one other interview that I've been looking forward to doing thanks to uh, really Lauren's patience and also because she, once she shared her pictures with me, I said, wow, I can't wait to talk to her. Lauren, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. I'm happy to finally get to talk with you. Absolutely. Lauren, I think I want to start off by asking you why you call yourself an explorer. Um, I chose that because I felt like photographer has become too limiting for what I do. Um, you know, when people ask me, well, what, you know, what do you do? And, uh, you know, I teach photography, I teach visual arts, I write, I make fine artwork, I do commercial work. Um, and so, uh, you know, photographer just doesn't hold it anymore for me. Okay. And, yeah. and, and, uh, from your, from your images, I, it, I can see the sort of the breadth of work that you've been sort of involved in, you know, mm -hmm. from photojournalism to kids to, I mean, just the whole, the whole gamut of things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what, what, what is it, what is it one thing that inspires you to pick up a camera and make images in the first place? Um, connection with people. I love hearing people's story. I love interacting with people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I'm not, I'm not a big group kind of people. But I love having conversations in an intimate way with people and seeing who they are and being able to reflect that back to them. That's and yeah, so yeah. I like to say that I'm a very responsive photographer. Ah, well, I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that a lot. That's great. That's probably how I would describe myself. Yeah. Um, when I'm photographing, I'm also, you know, sort of soaking up the energy that people in front of me are giving out. More right. Than, more than my putting the energy out first. I'm waiting for them to sort of deliver, and I'm going, "Oh, that's awesome! I'll take that." You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and make some images. That's great. Um, as I as I've already told you a couple of times now, that picture of the holy his holiness the Dalai Lama is just mm -hmm. such a wonderful image of him, caught uh, in in sort of mid flight almost because he's taken yeah. off. It looks like. Yeah. Um, when was that shot, and how was that made? That was in um, 2012, I believe. Yeah, 2012, late 2012. Um, it was a press conference for an event that I was the photographer for in Newark, New Jersey. It was ah. a um, Peace Education Summit. And um, so I was there for the, the press conference, but then I was also there the following day to shoot the actual event. And... Um, for me, it was the pinnacle of my career was that moment of literally sitting at his feet on the floor where he was, you know, speaking from uh, in this little dais. And uh, just I, at some certain points, I was like, I have to I have to remember to shoot because he's literally like talking right to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, you know, having not been a press photographer, right. this was a really different experience for me. I mean, I've been, you know, I've gone to events, I've documented things like that before, but n never with like the whole press corps kind of thing um, and not an event, you sure. know. Uh, are, yeah. you, are you a Buddhist? Um, leaning, <laughs> okay, okay. leaning towards that. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, it was a great honor for me to go, definitely, um, definitely. to go to that. And then, um, actually while I was traveling, I visited his monastery in India. Oh, yeah. Wow, excellent. In yeah. Dharmasala. Yep. Excellent. Very nice. Um, tell me a little bit about your, you, you've got several projects Yeah. Uh, from looking <laughs> at your uh, signature line from your emails. I'm like, wow, you are one busy lady. You know, uh, what what exactly is the 108 day days of practice? What is that? Okay, so and who is it for? Who is it for? It's for myself as um, an art and spiritual practice, staying present in my day, connected to the practice of 
making art, of seeing my world, of connecting. And I, um, so I started that 10 cycles ago. The 108 days is the, ra the amount of days I committed to doing for the first time in 2010. And after 108 days, I said, okay, I'll do another 108 days. So I'm just finishing the 10th round. Oh, wow. Um, as of, I think, Sunday is probably the last, the, the, the 108th and eighth day. And, um, and I basically, I photographed something, at, at least something, mm -hmm. <laughs> one, one time a day. And I post it on my blog that's called 108 Days of Practice. And whoever sees it, sees it. It was never my intention. It, basically, I needed to keep it really simple. Sure. So I, I, sh I started out shooting with my digital camera and it quickly switched to shooting with my iPhone and found the rhythm of that worked for me. Um, and it, the main purpose of it was to get me out of my desk chair, out of the boredom of editing, and connected to the world. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Really, really incredible. Yeah. Um, what is the significance of 108, though? Well, that's the number of beads on a mala, you know, the string of prayer beads. And it's also ha the number of sutras in um, the ancient texts. And from what I understand, the number of knots on a Jewish prayer talus. Uh, so the number shows up in a lot of places. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh, speak to us a little bit about uh, Milk House Arts. That's another project of yours. Yeah, so that's my new adventure that I'm on. Um, so what I've uh, done in this past year, ha having returned from traveling around the world, is really look at what's, what's my values, what's the focus of what I want to do, um, weaning my way away from the wedding industry and looking to cultivate more art in my own life and more writing in my life. So um, I've started, I got trained in this Amherst Writers and Artists method to be able to facilitate groups using, writing groups using that method. And so I'm marrying that up with my teaching artist experience to be able to offer. Um, writing groups and also art and writing uh, day long or weekend long retreats for people to connect to the practice of their own creative life. Fascinating. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, is any of that going to segue into your presentation at Inspire yeah, in February? Yeah, very much so. That Tell us, of, talk to us a little bit about uh, your your Inspire presentation then. Okay, so I am dealing, I'm talking about the idea of how you sustain over a long period of time a career as a creative person. And, you know, having been, you know, doing that for almost 30 years and looking at the ebbs and flows and my interests of, you know, as a photographer, you know, it, it has gone up and down and up and down and um, and so at certain times I've made more art and other times it's really been on the sidelines and what I've come to discover is that it's vitally important to retain your own sense of creativity whether it's for your clients or for your own art making or for your own soul work right. that um, that can get really lost in the process of being a business person um, so I discovered true. I discovered that for myself over a number of years at different periods, yeah. and so my want is to give people the opportunity to explore their creativity through some playful exercises and to look at the way in which they can cultivate a creative practice in their life. Excellent. Why inspire? Um, well great group of people. <laughs> I love Matt and Anna and I you know I spoke at Inspire in 2011 I think or 2012. 2012, yeah. And um, I really completely enjoyed myself the last time and I love the community and um, the opportunity to um, you know really help each other to be better at what we do and to understand the workings of it as a business and um, 
you know, just there's so much opportunity to learn from each other and not, you know, or, here's what I want to want to say. Early on in the business, way back in the early 80s, well, mid 80s and the early 90s, Photography was a different world. In, in New York, it was like really secretive, really, you know, you like held everything tight. And what I found in the years, you know, in the, in the 2000s, <laughs> things have changed. Information is much more available and people are much more inviting of connection. And I want to be part of that. That's beautiful. That's really yeah. beautiful. And I think you've hit the nail on the head in terms of why Inspire is such an important yeah. event for photographers. So for those of you who are listening in, uh, those, I mean, that what, what uh, Lawrence just mentioned to you is, is really why you should consider coming to Inspire this next February. And uh, the dates are February 9th through the 11th in Portland, Maine. And it's going to be a fabulous event, I can tell you right now. Thank you so much, Lauren. I appreciate well, it. And, and you'll all get to celebrate my birthday. Well, there's always that bonus. Because <laughs> it's right there in that, on February 10th. You all can. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. What should we bring you? Cup, uh, chocolate cupcakes, please. Chocolate cupcakes. How many can you yeah. eat at one time? Uh, probably at least five. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I should. <laughs> oh, this is going to be so much fun. Thank you so much again, Lauren. You're very welcome. Take it's care. Bye. Bye-bye.